Hi, this is Momo. Welcome to another tutorial. In this video, I'll show you how to run Umbrella OS on an old idle computer that's just collecting dust. It's perfect for setting up a Bitcoin node, a home cloud, or even a home lab. Installing Umbrella in most cases is as simple as flashing your USB stick with the latest Umbrella OS USB installer ISO file using a tool like Belinature or Rufus. Then just put your computer from the USB and install Umbrella. That's it. But sometimes, like it was in my case, it's not that straightforward. For example, you might encounter errors like invalid signature detected when booting from the USB and no media present even after successfully installing Umbrella. That can be frustrating. But don't worry, there's a way to fix it, no matter how old your computer is. I managed to make it uh, work on my MSI CX62 6QL computer with the help of my good friend Guiban, who is a doc. Yes, you heard me right, he's a doc. Here's his logo. Uh, let's jump in and see how we can install Umbrella on an ancient laptop or PC. First off, instead of Rufus or Belina Itcher, I recommend using Ventoy. It simplifies everything. I'll include a video tutorial by the Ask Your Computer Guy channel that explains all the Ventoy magic. To use it, flash Ventoy onto your USB stick, very much like you would uh, when creating a bootable USB for Windows or Linux. That's the last ISO you'll ever need to flash. After that, you simply drag and drop as many ISO files as you want onto your USB. When you boot from the, this USB, a menu appears like this. And from there, you can select any bootable media. Uh, I won't cover how to use Ventoy in detail, just check the video I linked in the description below. Uh, it's thorough and it leaves nothing out. Ventoy is, is not just helpful, it's required for this tutorial. And of course, it makes your life much easier. In addition to the Umbrel OS AMD64 USB installer ISO file, you also need SuperGrub to a disk ISO file. I'll include the download link in the video description as well. Once both ISOs are copied on your Vento USB, it's time to adjust your BIOS settings. Depending on your system, not all of these settings may apply and some of the options might have a slightly different name. In BIOS, und under SATA mode selection, choose AHCI. On some si systems, this may just say SATA. I'm using a SATA SSD and enabling AHCI was necessary for my system to detect it. If you're using Umbrel as a Bitcoin node, which is the most common use case, don't use an HDD. It's going to be an absolute torture. SSD is a must in this case. One tip I got from my friend uh, was to disable VT-D, so disable it. If you get the error invalid signature detected, like I did, when trying to boot from USB, make sure secure boot is disabled in BIOS. Under boot mode select, choose UFE, UFI, how, however it is pronounced. On my system, this was under the boot section. Also, disable fast boot. I'm not sure if it's essential, but this is how my computer was set up, how my BIOS was set up. Set your boot order so that it first boots from USB if present, followed by, the, by your SSD, which may still be listed as hard disk. Don't worry if it's not labeled specifically as SSD, it will still work. Once you've made all necessary BIOS changes, make sure your USB is plugged in, save and exit, and it will restart. This might apply to you too. 
my USB only boots when plugged into the USB 3 port, which you can identify by its blue marking. If your USB doesn't boot, try different ports. Newer ports are more likely to work. Here's my Ventoy boot menu. In addition to Umbrel and Super Grub, I've added Hiren's Boot CD, Ubuntu, and Windows 11 just to flex how powerful Ventoy is. Though here we only need Umbrel and Super Grub only. First, select the Umbrel ISO and press Enter. This is important. Choose the option Boot in Grub 2. Do not select the first option. It's now loaded and we are ready to install. Here you choose the drive on which Umbrel will be installed. Be extra careful, choosing the wrong drive will erase it completely. To avoid mistakes, I recommend physically removing any other internal drive except your SSD that you are going to install Umbrel on. In my case, I see three options. One is clearly my USB stick. It says SanDisk with a 57 gigabyte capacity. Do not format this. Maybe it is not even possible to format it technically. Um, I also have a one terabyte HDD and a one terabyte SSD. Same size, different names. I want to install Umbrel OS on my one terabyte crucial SSD, which is listed as option one. It starts with C, which probably stands for crucial, and ends with SSD. So I type 1 and hit enter. Installation will take a few minutes. Once the installation finishes, you'll see this message. Press any key to shut down. Rem remember to remove the USB before turning the device back on. Press any key. Remove the USB and turn your computer back on. Let's see how it goes. Like me, you might now see checking media presence, no media present error. If that happens, don't panic. We've got just the solution for that. This is where SuperGrub comes to the rescue. Insert your USB again and boot from it. In the Ventoy menu, choose SuperGrub2. Select boot in normal mode, probably doesn't make a difference. From the super grub menu, choose boot manually, operating systems. It will scan your system for installed operating systems. It will take a minute or two. Then you get a list like this. Skip down to get to the Linux category. Look for entries with names like VM Linus dash the version dash AMD64. You may see several entries. The first one on my system is HD1 GPT3 X2. Write down the name of each option you try. If one doesn't work, having notes saves time. Before hitting enter on an option, connect your LAN cable, that's crucial for Umbrella OS, then press enter. If it works, you'll see Umbrella logo with the IP and the NS info, which is Umbrella local. We managed to load to our Umbrella, but we are not done yet. It's not yet stable, and once you restart, everything is lost. We need a couple of more steps. Now switch to another computer connected to the same network. From my MacBook, I open a browser and type umbrella.local. If that doesn't work, use the IP address shown on the Umbrel OS screen. If it works, you get this page, click continue to site. Nice, you'll see the welcome screen. Click start, set a name, Enter and confirm your password. This is why we've come here. We're going to need this password. Create. You'll see your all set. Your name is also shown. Next. Now you're inside the beautiful Umbrella dashboard where you can manage your node 
and apps remotely. Now we can go back to the original machine where Umbrel OS is running to finalize the steps. As logs fly across the screen, simply type Umbrel. That's the username. This is also very important. Don't type the username you just created, but use Umbrel as your username. Then press enter. You likely won't see what you type on one line and it's hard to keep track. That's okay. Type your password the same way. Keep your monk-like focus despite the nosy logs that are flying over. And press enter. Yes, the Umbrel logo appears, which means you've logged into the root of Umbrel and you can make the final changes. Note, this is very important. Before you continue, make sure to remove your USB stick. Now you are safe to enter the following com commands in this exact order. I'll note the commands in the description too. The first one is sudo apt install grub dash EFI. You'll be asked for your password, type it in and press enter. Here also you'll need to keep calm and keep typing the commands in the midst of all the logs flying on the screen. You'll be asked do you want to continue, type Y and hit enter. Once it's installed, run sudo upgrade-grop. Pay attention to the screen. Once you see done, then type in sudo grop-install. Look for installing finished, no errors reported. Once you see this line, go back to your other computer in the Umbrel GUI settings and click restart. Back on your Umbrel OS machine, you'll see it restart. This is the moment of truth. And yes, you'll see the blue boot menu with De Debian GNU Linux, which is in fact your Umbrel OS. Hit enter, it boots. Lo logs appear, your IP address and login DNS show up again. Congratulations, you're up and running. Now you can go back to your other machine or any other machine connected to the same network, log in, install your favorite apps and enjoy running your node while diving into the world of self-hosting. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you did, please give me a like and hit the subscribe button to support more content like this. If you run into any issues or have questions, feel free to drop them in the comments or share your own workarounds for the pro problems I discussed or any other challenges people might face when setting up their own note. You'll find all the relevant links, including how to follow and support me in the link tree in the description. And if you'd like to show some love, consider buying me a coffee or sending me some sats. Thanks for watching and happy node running.